Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the seventh video in a series of videos I'm doing on review of raw data in TB TBC, Trimble Business Center. And in the last video, we did a refresh of the steps we went through in the first five videos. We did that with a new data set all in one shot. So it was one video. We, we walked through all the steps except for the very last step. And so in this video, before we get to that last step, I want to show you how on a project where we start with real-time network for control, we kind of backtrack and create a network project. So before we get into that visually here in this video, let me explain what my, my normal process is like. So normally, I will start a project with a fast static survey. That fast static data gets processed in a TBC project that I call a network project. Okay, So process all the baselines, run the loop closures, do the network adjustment. I might also add some adjusted elevations if there is a, uh, if there was some leveling work done. So all that gets done in the network project. So let me explain why I keep a, a separate network project. So I have a network project Trimble Business Center project, and I have a working Trimble Business Center project on every job. And the reason I do that is I always want to be able to go back to my primary control that is in the network project, and I don't ever want those values, as a, as a general rule, I don't ever want those values to change, especially accidentally, okay? So what can happen in your working project, so remember now your working project is where you're checking in each of your daily jobs every time there's a field survey. And it's not very hard, one or two of, of the wrong button clicks, and you can accidentally apply site, site calibration to that project, or you can move the project, points in the project, or you can corrupt the project file. And so I want to make sure that those daily check-ins and kind of the daily cleanup work that's happening with the raw data on the project isn't going to affect the network project. The, the control, basically it's the control that's in the network project. Okay, so that's why I keep those separate. So my typical workflow is static survey, maybe a little bit of leveling. All that gets processed and adjusted in a network project. Once the network project's completed, I export the primary control from the network project in and then I create a brand new working project. I import that control and all my daily jobs get imported into that working project, TBC project. What that allows me to do is it allows me to go in at any time and compare the values on those control points between the working project and the, and the network project and see if there's been any changes, okay? So that's the typical workflow. In this case, there was no static survey. So I basically, in, in essence, I have an assumed coordinate reference system. Okay, It's a local control system or assumed system, but we're using the RTN. Now, why do I do that? Well, the reason we do that is, at least with the RTN, uh, I'm on state plane coordinates, and I can easily overlay my survey data on GIS data or, uh, you know, publicly available orthophotography. So there are some advantages to being in state plane coordinates. And in this particular case, I know the reference network I'm using. I understand the control that it's based on. I know it's pretty close to the cores in my area, NGS cores. Um, it's not exactly the same, but it's fairly close. So I have a, a high level of comfort with the coordinate values I'm getting out of the real-time network. And because of that, and for the other reasons I mentioned, kind of the data integration reasons, uh, I'd much rather have a survey, especially a little site survey like this, based on RTN coordinates than just on 5,000, 10,000 assumed coordinates. Okay, but one of the one of the challenges with that. So if we just if we're doing a small site survey and we go out, we set the control RTN and then do our work, is we we don't have a network project. There was no static data to process. And so we got to work backwards. And we still want to do that because we still want to end up with two separate TBC projects. One that's just for the control that doesn't get touched by everybody in the office. And then we have our second project, the working project, which is where 
techs can check in and review uh, the daily jobs. So all the, the raw data coming in from the field surveys that are being done on the project. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how we take a project where we've gone out and done our initial survey, set some control RTN, and then done some other work, how we back this into a network project that just has the control. Okay, And the reason I'm showing you this video now, this is video number seven in the series, is you want to do this after you've gone in, resolve the flags, lock down, and lock down your control. Okay, Because otherwise you're going to repeat work. So you don't want to do that. Okay, So after you've taken care of your flags, gone in and reviewed your control and locked it down, made sure your control is good, what we're going to do is we're going to just come in and we're going to save a copy of this working project. And in my office that goes in the same spot. The network project goes in the same spot. So we're just going to rename it to network. Okay, and I like to do a little versioning on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in and essentially delete all of the information in this job that's not related to the control. Okay, now because of the way we do things in my office, that's actually fairly easy to do. Okay, so essentially what you could do is you could come in and just delete all these numbers that are not in the control series. Okay. except for your the virtual base here at the bottom. We don't want to delete that. Okay, and when you do that, it also eliminates those vectors. And so you can see what I'm left with now is just my control, my control points, my vectors that establish those control points, and my check shots on the control. And that's exactly what I wanted there. So super easy, right, if you've got a good point numbering system. And so once that's done, I'm going to just come over here to Zoom Extents, and I'm going to save that. And now I've got a project that I don't want to touch again unless we're doing additional control work, okay? So all of my other work on this job now is going to be done in that working project, and I can always go back now and check my original, not only the, the coordinate values on these control points, but I can look at how those values were calculated and or adjusted, okay? So I wanted to show you guys that process of backing out a network project when you start a survey with RTN control. All right, that was a, a pretty quick video, but I just wanted to show you guys that process. We're at about seven minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and end this video now, and we're going to open up the working project on this job in TBC, and we're going to go through that last step of the process, my raw, raw data review process, and that's the step you haven't seen in any of the videos yet. So you want to make sure... You catch that video in the series of video number eight. We're going we're gonna, to uh, execute that last step in video number eight. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.